All right, welcome back to chapter four. So where we left off, Janie and Logan are in the middle of a fight. So let's see what happens. Logan dropped his shovel and made two or three clumsy steps towards the house, then stopped abruptly. Don't you change too many words with me this morning, Janie. Do I'll, I'll take and change ends with you. Here, I just as good as take you out to the white folks' kitchen and set you down on your royal dieticus. And you take and ri low rate me? I'll take hold of that axe and come in there and kill you. You better dry up in there. I'm too honest and hard working for anybody in your family. That's the reason why you don't want me. The last sentence was half a sob and half a cry. I guess some low life man is grinning in your face and lying to you. Damn your hide. Janie turned around from the door without answering and stood still in the middle of the floor without knowing it. She turned wrong side out, just standing there and feeling. When the throbbing calmed a little, she gave Logan's speech a hard thought and placed it beside other things she had seen and heard. When she had finished with what she had dumped, when she finished with that, she dumped the dough on the skillet and smoothed it over with her hand. She wasn't even angry. Logan was accusing her and her mama, her grandmama, and her feelings, and she couldn't do a thing about any of it. The so belly in the pan needed turning. She flipped it over and shoved it back. A little cold water in the coffee pot to settle it. Turned the hoe cake with a plate and then made a little laugh. What was she losing so much time for? A feeling of sudden newness and change came over her. Janie hurried out of the front gate and turned south. Even if Joe was not there waiting for her, the change was bound to do some good. So let's pause right there and let's talk about whether there is anything Killix could have done to make Janie stay. Because at this point we realize that their marriage is over, Janie's leaving him, she's going to go meet up with Joe, and even if she can't find Joe, she's leaving because she wants change. And so Logan is hardworking and does want a wife and he's hurt by the situation. So we feel sympathetic towards him because he was trying to do the right thing and it just Janie was not the right person but Janie is young and unhappy she doesn't want to spend the next several decades of her life um that makes her unhappy and we can also understand that so we also feel sympathetic for her and so essentially it's just a difficult situation where no one gets to win so the question is was there anything Killix could have done to make Janie stay also, in this situation, you as a reader, do you think it's Logan's fault? Do you think it's Janie's fault? Is it both their faults or is it no one's fault? So give that some thought because I'd like to know tomorrow what you think about this. But let's get back to reading and finish off chapter four. The morning road air was like a new dress that made her feel the apron tied around her waist. She untied it and flung it on a low bush beside the road and walked on, picking flowers and making a bouquet. After that, she came to where Joe Starks was waiting for her, with a hired rig. He was very solemn and helped her to the seat beside him. With him on it, it sat like some high, ruling chair. From now on until death, she was going to have flower dust and springtime sprinkled over everything. A bee for her bloom. Her old thoughts were going to come in handy now, but new words would have to be made and said to fit them. Green Cove Springs, he told the driver, so they were married there before sundown, just like Joe had said, with new clothes of silk and wool. They sat on the boarding house porch and saw the sun plunge into the same crack in the earth from which the night emerged. So Jody and Janie get married. And why is it that Janie chose Jody? What does Jody offer that Killix could not? It goes back to Janie's kind of youthful ideal of love, where Jody essentially is promising to treat her like a queen and give her nice things, and she can sit around and have people work for her. And it's very romanticized, and he calls her beautiful, and he's handsome himself and wears fancy clothes. And so it's the idea, it goes back to when Janie was younger, and she had this fantastic idea of like what ro romance and love could be. 
But it does say in the writing that even though those are helpful thoughts from her past, she needs new words um, to describe it now. And essentially what that means is that she's older now and so she can't have kind of that youthful, um, overly romanticized um, kind of fairy tale idea of love. She needs something that's um, more meaningful to her now as a woman. And so she needs a new way to think about love. And Jodi offers that new version of love that's very attractive to her. And so let's return to chapter one, those first two paragraphs, with this kind of dichotomy that Zora Neale Hurston sets up of how men and women approach life. Um, and so we see Jody, and we can see him kind of fitting into this life of men analogy that Hurston creates, the idea that Jody has a dream, and that dream is to go to um, uh, go to Florida to go to the first um, town that's been created by uh, an entirely black community to go to Eatonville and to make something of himself and that's his dream and that's the boat that he has his eyes set on and that he's dedicated to. Now we have Janie who's fitting into the analogy that Hurston created where Janie has essentially moved on from Logan Killicks. She has forgotten that part of her life and now she's taking the few things she wants to remember, those youthful ideas of love, the lessons that her nanny has taught her, and she's moving on to a new part of her life with Jody Starks. And so we see Zora Neale Hurston creating examples that fit into that original argument that she developed at the beginning of her story. And so I want to posit the same question again of, do you agree or disagree with Zora Neale Hurston? Do you think that her breakdown of the life of people, how people differ and how they approach life, do you agree with these differences that she's creating or do you disagree? So continue thinking about that and thinking about what you might make your project on. It could be about a lot of different things. Right now we have themes about love, about loss. We have themes about family and um, older family members trying to teach younger family members. We have um, historical themes about slavery and freedom and war. There's a lot that you can work with, so give it some thought. And thank you so much for listening to the chapter three and four videos, and I will see you tomorrow for chapter five. All right, bye.